Researchers from the University of Chicago studied European rulers from 1480 to 1913 and found that European queens were 27% more likely to wage war than kings, with married queens being the most likely to go to battle. Anyways. Hey, what's up, guys? Nick Davenport here, aka Mr. Mental Muscle. We have another episode today on the Mental Breakdown channel. Now, as you can see, that's a clip from a channel called Just Pearly Things. Now, this came up on my subscription. I've seen numerous videos from this creator. She talks about a lot of different subjects, a lot of stuff with interdynamic relationships between men and women. So you can see how that can get quite controversial. But this particular clip is from a video with one of her detractors that disagreed with some of her statements. Now, this particular statement was about queens waging war through history more often than men. So I said, hmm, this is a pretty interesting stat. I, I used to be a history teacher, so I actually know a little bit about some of this stuff. Not a lot, but a little. And I was like, I could teach a psychological concept called confirmation bias. Now, if you don't know what confirmation bias is, it's basically the tendency to believe new evidence that is more aligned with what you already believe. Now, you can see that could be quite dangerous because when we want to figure out different decisions or make choices, we sometimes need to hear what the best option is, and it's not always what's in line with our views. So we're all guilty of this to some extent, but I wanna talk about how it was displayed in this clip, how we can understand it better, and how can you even combat it if it happens to you. So with that being said, guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this video, and let's break it down. Now let's go a little bit deeper into confirmation bias. So let's give some examples. Now, I guess the lowest hanging fruit from this would be politics. We just had an election a few weeks ago, and as always, depending on your party, there's going to be difference from one side or another, Democratic, Republican. And at the end of the day, people tend to lean towards the side that they already agree with. Now, we get into like the debates, different candidates, and they'll say different topics, different facts on their stances on political issues. And the other side will say their stances. But guess what? It tends to be unchanging. And it's almost like irrelevant to even do the debate because most people are going to side with the candidate that they already support. So you can see how it could be a moot argument trying to present new information when they already have made up their minds. Another example that we can use that may be more relevant to the clip we're covering today is when a teacher, for example, has a disdain for a student. So regardless of how well that student improves in the class, they're still going to look at them as a bad student, not learning, not being part of the groups, not progressing. You can see how that's detrimental because a kid wants to learn, but they're not getting the attention they need because the teacher made up their mind that they'll never be worth giving attention to. So this is confirmation bias. We all do it to some degree. It's just a part of how the brain works. Our brain likes to make decisions and jump to conclusions to save energy, but sometimes this could be faulty decision-making. That's why it's called a cognitive bias. So this is what happens with confirmation bias in itself. It's like, yeah. like, you know, yeah. women are more likely to wage war. <laughs> to do what? To do what? To wage war. How are there statistics for things that haven't happened? It technically hasn't happened. But if it did, this is definitively how it would. Like percentage wise. Like I know more men have because more men have been in power, but yeah. women are actually more likely to do it when they're in power. What percentages? You can't just. 27%. We can put. <laughs> 27% specifically. <laughs> Warmongering female leaders can be found throughout history and across the globe, from Bodica to Catherine II of Russia to Renavala. I'm pronouncing these names wrong. Renavala I, the Mad Queen of Madagascar, um, the Celtic Queen of the Iceni tribe, led a revolt against Rome in 6061 AD that left 80,000 Roman citizens of Britain dead. 27% more likely, if you're wondering. And typically back a hypothetical. Let's take your theory and apply it to this diagram here. Here. So first, identify the problem, women, obviously. Number two, collect data. This one's a little difficult because you don't have any. So in this clip, you see that Pearl brought up a stat saying that women queens throughout history were 27% more likely to wage war opposed to the kings. So men versus women, right? And her detractor says this stat can't be true because it's never happened. So this is where the problem in lies. What happened here? Her confirmation bias goes so strongly to one direction that she completely eradicated the fact that there was women queens because her main argument was based on the fact that where would Pearl get these stats from? She's just making up hypotheticals. They have polarizing beliefs. So Pearl believes strongly on one side. This lady identifies as a staunch feminist on this side. So they're definitely not on the same side of the thought process. Now, this is something I call the Alaska-Russia effect. Now, if you didn't know, Russia and Alaska 
are right across from each other. Now, once upon a time before the Ice Age, there was something called the Bering Strait. And there was these small islands that actually you could get to the other side. But after the ice caps melt, the water rises, and now we can no longer just walk to America. At one point in time, you could, and this is how the Native Americans actually got here and eventually inhabited the rest of North America, Central, and South America. So the reason I use this analogy, because if you think about it, if you go far enough east, you'll end up in Alaska. If you go far enough west, you'll end up in Russia. That Bering Strait's still there, so it's treacherous terrain, but you still can get there. But the point is, if you go far enough to either direction, you're going to end up at the side you technically didn't want to be on. And you can see this in this clip. She went so far left to say that she's a feminist, women have been oppressed. So when Pearl brought up the stat about queens invading and starting wars 27% of the time, more than men, she automatically went to the mindset of women weren't leaders. Women can evade. They can't start wars because there's obviously been women rulers. There's Cleopatra, Hatshepsut, uh, Catherine. Elizabeth I, Elizabeth II, Mary Queen of Scots, Isabella from Spain. So just off the top of my head, that's what I can come up with. So you can think that there has been women leaders in history, but she's interpreting it as, oh, I'm a feminist. I don't believe that women have had rights. Therefore, the fact you're bringing up a stat about women leaders, which we know there's none in power, not correct. So how could they wage war? Because she believes that men are the ones causing all the wars. And you can argue they have caused most wars, yes, because there have been more male leaders. And that's not what this is about, men versus women. But the fact is, her confirmation bias made her go so far left that she came fully back around through Alaska to Russia, or Russia to Alaska, because no matter what, they're going to go through each other. And she came back to the conclusion that this can't be true. So she's not being able to be presented with new information, new evidence. And this is the problem with confirmation bias, because it can cause us to do detriment to our own beliefs, because now we're not allowing ourselves to grow and we can't live life like that. I don't care what your beliefs are. You have to be able to let conflicting information that may not align with your stance or your views because it helps you grow and become a better person. So that begs the question, how do we identify this? How do we not allow this to happen to ourselves? So one thing you can do is talk to people that don't believe in what you believe in. This may seem counterproductive, but it doesn't mean you have to take in everything they say, but they might bring along points that make sense that may not be what you think, but they can help guide you into a direction that, hmm, I can see it that way. You take what makes sense and leave what doesn't. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Also, instead of looking for what's right along with your views, look what, what's wrong. For example, if someone was to type into the Google search bar, why are Democrats wrong about this election? Guess what articles are going to come up? A hundred articles about why Democrats are wrong about the election or vice versa, Republicans, whatever your party is, insert that why they're wrong. And you're going to find exactly what you're looking for, right? They say, don't go looking for trouble because you're always going to find it. In this case, you're going to find exactly what you search for, which is going to go in line with what you already believe. So instead of saying, why are Democrats always wrong about the election? Look up why are Republicans always wrong about the election? Just flip it for the stance you believe in. Like I said, I'm using the political because it's probably the most popular polarizing topic that people are divided on. But the goal is to question your thoughts. Now, if you're able to question your own thoughts, talk to people that don't believe what you believe and be able to take in what makes sense, you're definitely going to have room to grow. Because like I said, the brain likes to take cuts and shortcuts to make decisions because it uses a lot of energy every day. So it's easier just to go off what we assume to be true which is not always a good choice. So take heed from this clip right here. Try not to be like that other woman because granted she can have her own beliefs, but she automatically disregarded what was factual simply because it was from someone she didn't like and she only wanted to identify what she already believed in. This is a very fatal flaw and we don't want to do this because it won't be able to get our minds right. So thanks guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment to this video. Check out Pearl's channel. I actually like a lot of her stuff. And as always, thanks for letting me break it down and get your mind right.